Chris Skaggs. I'm with Soma Games. And uh, we started uh, uh, back in uh, January last year, actually, working with the iPhone. And uh, recently in, uh, I guess it was January this year, we were a part of the Intel App Up Center, their launch at CES. We've been really excited about that. We ported um, the game uh, that we made, G, into the rain um, from the iPhone over to the App Up Center, which I guess is what we're here to talk about. So do you think you can comment on the experience of porting an iPhone game onto an App Up? Yeah, in our case, it turned out to be a really comfortable way to go. Um, uh, Objective-C for us was a, a pretty easy port to uh, flex, and so we were able to take most of the code almost line for line and uh, obviously change the syntax a little bit, but by and large, when we were done, we had a flash executable that was built in Flex, and we were able to do that in just about two and a half weeks, so it was actually pretty pretty fast. Um, we did have a few things to change graphics-wise, so you have a bigger screen, um, higher uh, high resolution requirements, and also because the aspect ratio is a little bit different, so a few little things uh, graphically, but by and large, it was the same game, and, uh, and then when that came out as a flash um, movie, the next thing we could do is just take a C++ wrapper and uh, put that around the thing, which is where Intel's authentication layer was able to come in, and that worked perfectly. So submitted that. There was a there was a little bit of of, a, of, of hinkiness on how that would work, on, because I know that the air runtime environment they weren't sure if that was going to work yet, but it turned out to be actually really easy to do. And, uh, and in fact, uh, Intel staff was really, really, frankly, probably better than they needed to be to us. They just bent over backwards to help us with the whole thing, and uh, and was we were really happy with the both the user experience for one thing. It turned out to be easy but also Intel really helped us, and frankly, Apple never helps us for anything. So it was actually really great, so. So do you think you can give us a demo of the game? Sure, and so, uh, so the game is called G Into the Rain, and, uh, and in this case, um, a typical level is set up where you have, uh, you have targets, um, you have your ship is where you start, and then you have any number of obstacles. So in this case, there's a couple of asteroids, and uh, the asteroids uh, exert gravity. So there's a whole class of games that are gravity simulators, and this is uh, kind of cut in that same mold. I want to bring up my fire control, which is where I set the angle that I want my rocket to launch, um, uh, any uh, as, as much uh, thrust as it's going to get. So in this case, for example, I want to pull off to the to the side here. Um, I don't want to be too strong, so I'm going to adjust these out. And when I'm done, I'm going to launch, and I want to try to get my rocket over those things, and then I, uh, I hit him with the sonar. So I try to rock out here, and that's going to ring up. There's a lot of dialogue. Actually, we've got a lot of good attention on the... Uh, the voiceover work, apparently it was a lot more than people expected. So some levels you want to be pretty patient, other levels are a lot more action oriented. This one's kind of in between. Um, and I, as I come back, I'm going to try to thrust over, try not to kill myself. <laughs> and then I'm going to come back for another run. And the more distance you get, the higher your points. And so right now I kind of rock back and forth in the gravity. and. Uh, in the, when I when I save a level and when I when I get through, here's keeping track of how far off the screen I get. Um, there's a maximum range. Um, then the score is based on how many uh, kind of the total distance, so miles are what count, um, as well as how many rockets I use. So here, this is going to be close if I can get up there, and I'm out of gas, so I just have to wait for gravity. But then when it's done, I can uh, send my score to Twitter. It's engaged with uh, with with my Twitter account, with my Facebook account, as well as I can also uh, email challenges to friends. And I'm just gonna miss it. So I just blew myself up, but that's the basic idea of the game. So. And what was it like uh, changing iPhone controls over onto a netbook? Like, how did you deal with the fact that there's accelerometers on the iPhone and there's not on a netbook? You know, it turned out at first we thought that was gonna be a big challenge, but it's actually really, really simple. Um, we we uh, we basically mapped keyboard controls to everything that was in here. So instead of rocking the phone left and back, we used the arrow keys. Um, instead of shaking the phone to destroy it, uh, to self-destruct the rocket, there's a, just the delete key. So it turned to be very, very easy. In fact, the keyboard controls on the netbook are actually a lot more interactive and they're, they're better to use because this is really limited in the ways that I can interact with it. I have a lot more options on the netbook because I have the full keyboard and if I want, I can use the mouse. So the menus are actually easier, they're better to navigate and we added some extra features to the netbook that didn't make sense here. So one of the biggest, for example, people is that we had to figure out a way to self-destruct the rocket and we you shake the phone to do that but people like fall asleep or they get bumped on a bus or something. And we've, people get complained about that and suddenly they've spent a lot of time on a level. Um, and the netbook's a lot more stable. Like people don't accidentally hit the delete key usually. So actually people like the interface better on the netbook than they do here. So, and we're going to learn a lot of that I think with when we port it to the iPad and other platforms. Actually we learned a lot in that process on how to just make the UI a lot better. So that was a good, good for that. Thank you. Yeah.